welcome back to the shed. Now if you're familiar with my channel, you'll certainly be familiar with the little wigwag engines. Now all my engines normally, I build the flywheels out of brass. But because of the price of brass these days, I've started to look at cheaper alternatives. And I've made some flywheels from steel and aluminium. Now to test the engines, I needed some sort of load, so I've decided to build a Baker fan. The Baker fan was first developed by Abner Baker of the A.D. Baker Steam Tractor Company, based in Swanton, Ohio, in the late 1800s, as a means of adding a load to his newly built engines so they could be run in and tested before being sold on to the customers. In 1907, the Baker fan appeared at a tractor trade event in Wichita, Kansas, where several steam tractor manufacturers competed on the Baker fan to showcase the horsepower of their engines against their competitors. And still today, at steam events, you may well see a Baker fan in use just for this very purpose, although it was not the intended purpose, which was simply a load bank for testing and tuning steam tractors. So this is my little version of the Baker fan to run on the wigwag. It was basically made from 6mm aluminium square bar with some slots down the sides to allow for the flat plates of the blades of the fan to be able to be inserted. A hole through the centre for the shaft was made and the shaft could then be fitted to two uprights which will be bolted to a base. And of course I really ought to glue it together. A, a small four step pulley wheel was also made so that it could be regulated on the engine. So I made up three flywheels, a brass one, a steel one and an aluminium one. Here you can see me making the aluminium one. If you want to watch this full video, it's already on my YouTube channel. Just search my YouTube for basic machining flywheel. The brass weighed in at just over 300 grams, the steel 263 grams and the aluminium at 96 grams, which is almost a third of the original brass flywheel that I'd normally use. I also have this cast iron spoked flywheel which was bought as a casting and that weighed in at 123 grams. I needed to build a little wooden jig to be able to hold the engines when testing. This was simply glued together from some bits of plywood so that it would fit the engine and also the Baker fan. I'll connect the engine to the Baker fan using one of these green polyurethane bands. To make the drive belt I use this 2mm green polyurethane banding. Now this needs to be joined together using heat and it's not an easy task to do without some sort of jig. So I've built this very simple plywood jig which has one movable side and these are small clamps to be able to hold the green banding. I have a couple of sizes there because I have a couple of different sizes of banding. You simply cut the band to the length required and feed the two ends into the opposite sides. You leave about 5mm sticking out either side and then you tighten up the clamps. 
and as you can see it slides together nicely. So all I need to do now is heat up this razor blade to red hot so that I can melt the ends of the band and join them together. It's still a little bit tricky. I was trying to keep my head out of the way of the camera. But as you can see, both ends now melt and you can push them together. Now you need to leave this to cool before taking it out of the clamps. And once it has come out of the clamps, you'll see that it's got a join. This can easily be cleaned up with a pair of nice sharp side cutters. and it's surprising just how strong this band is. I've tried to break the joints before, but it simply becomes one. Now this wigwag engine has a groove which is cut into the crank disc rather than having a separate pulley. So the engine needed to be disassembled to be able to get the pulley on. It's then connected up to the baker fan and the air supply connected to the engine. and the baker fan works well. Obviously I've got the pulley so I can use different speeds to be able to change the temper of the engine. And as you can see, if I take the band off, the engine runs much faster, so it just shows how much load it's actually putting on. Now the weight of the flywheel will dictate how slow the engine can run. The heavier the flywheel, the slower the engine should be able to run. So the only way for me to really test this was to run the engine as slow as possible just before stalling and then measure the RPM of the flywheel. So I bought this digital tachometer from the Amazon forest in the hope that it might be able to read the flywheel speed. I painted the flywheels with die chem and then just cleaned off a small patch and that should be the reflective part which would, when, when the laser passes, it'll make a reading of the revs per minute. Now I tried this over and over, but simply the readings were just unreliable and they just kept going up and down and they were all over the place. It didn't stabilise, so there was no way I could actually use it for reading the RPM of the engines. So the plan is to run the engines as slow as possible, almost to the point of stalling, and then get a measurement of how fast the engine was going. just to the point where it's almost going to stall. See the holes in the uh, flywheel almost coming to a stop as the piston just gets around the corner onto the power stroke. If I go any slower, maybe just a fraction. Now, 
this thing doesn't really seem to do anything. So it's 220, 216. Oh, it's getting a bit too slow now. Yeah, well, I'm not going to bother with that. I think what I might do is just, uh, I might just count the strokes on the playback on the video. So I'll just get that as slow as possible. Just prior to story. Great Scott 80, that's not very scientific. It's okay Sophia, 80 later used an online metronome to accurately count the revs per minute. Okay, very unscientific. So I'll just um, swap the brass flywheel out now. And I'll put on the uh, next heavier, heaviest flywheel which is the steel one. So nothing's changed in the, uh, the engine settings. So again I'll just uh, run it up to a, a speed where I think it's uh, just ticking over without stalling really. I'm not so sure that 80 knows what he's doing. Hey Sophia, you should have more faith in the abilities of humankind. I'll start me counting again. Okay, now the final one, which is the lightweight flywheel, which of course is the uh, aluminium flywheel. Now there's, there's not a lot of weight difference, to be honest, between the brass and the steel, so uh, I didn't expect to see um, much of a change there. But I think the aluminium one is going to make quite a difference. It's going to have to run a lot faster to be honest, so let's see. So again I'll just slow it down to just short a stall pace and you can already see actually that when it gets around it's got much faster pulse. I'm not going to be able to count this one with my finger. So I'll just count that one on the video. Well, I think, um, you know, I'll put, the, I'll put the results up in a minute. I think that kind of proves it, really. Um, but, I mean, an alum, aluminium flywheel works fine. I mean, if I remove that, you'll see the difference of, of the, the load, actually, that's been put on by the uh, Baker fan, as you can see. It's quite a dramatic difference. Uh, but that doesn't mean that the, uh, the wig wag won't run with an aluminium flywheel, because it clearly does. It's just that you can't, um, you know, you need to, it won't run as slow basically as it, as it will do with a heavier flywheel, which I think we all knew was going to be the answer, but I thought it'd just be good to test it out. Yeah, it really struggles, struggles at uh, slow speed.
but it still runs great, to be honest. So there you go really. Does an aluminium flywheel work? Absolutely. Now one more test, which might be a bit crazy, but Does the wigwag run at all without any flywheel? Now obviously this has got the, it's sort of got a flywheel because it's got the, uh, the, you know, the solid round crank. So I'd be interested to see. Yes it does. You can see it's jumping around a bit, that's better. Get rid of that vibration. It does run without a flywheel. Not very well. Extremely jerky. And I'm not sure if it would run that well, you know, with the uh, the shaped uh, crank disc. That's pretty crazy. It's just, just getting around the corner, isn't it? Anyway, I think that's um, conclusive proof that uh, you know a lightweight flywheel can be used as long as you're prepared to accept the uh, the payoff that it's uh, it's going to run a lot faster than uh, than uh, obviously when it does have with the I mean you know look at the difference you know the heavier flywheel is definitely the way to go. But steel didn't really have any difference, so yep, steel's nice and cheap, or cheaper. Uh, probably cheaper than aluminium actually, so um, there you go. Anyway, I hope you like the, uh, the baker's fan. I'm sure I'll put that to... Uh, it's a good use in the future, even if it's just a, well, it's just a ornamental thing, which is a bit of fun. Come on. Just to add that little bit of load. It's also not got a nice, uh, you can feel the air coming off that. Don't put your fingers in there, as I have done a couple of times. It blooming well hurts, perhaps I'll two her far the corners off, uh, just so it's not quite so sharp. Ow! Oh, you and uh, obviously you can, you know, if you want to crank up the speed, I swatch my fingers again here. You know, you can, uh, can I do that? So obviously that'll uh, speed it up slightly. Or slow it down, whichever way it is. You can, you can really hear the load on the engine there. You know, it's really, really fighting. You know, so it's, it's, a, it's a good little device that it, um, you know, allows you to put the load on. And you see the difference once I knock it off. I come down one, yeah. Down another one. Obviously it's gone a bit slack. And then come off completely. And the engine's uh, going like the clappers. It's um, definitely a good, a good little loading machine. Anyway, there you go. Hope you enjoyed this little um, non-scientific video about um, well, what material's best for the flywheel. Basically, anything that's heavy, lightweight will work. But the heavier it is, the uh, the slower the engine will run. Got to clean all this dyke up now. Anyway, thanks for watching. Well, welcome back to the, not the shed this time, the editing suite. Um, I just thought I'd make this little, just a little short sort of uh, finished really to the video because. Um, 
I'm really pleased that I've finally managed to get this video finished. I do hope you enjoyed it. Um, it's been a long time coming. I wasn't even sure if the content was worth it because I think we all kind of knew that, you know, a heavier flywheel is going to be better than a lightweight flywheel. But it did prove that the lightweight flywheel works. So at least that's something. Anyway, I've, I've been at this video. I've been, a number of times I've, I've sort of um, started this, deleted it, started it, deleted it. Just haven't got anywhere with it at all. So um, I'm really quite pleased that it's nearly finished. Obviously, I've got to do a little bit more of editing and get it all sort of tidied up and smarted up, stuff like that. But I just wanted to say um, thank you all for uh, being around. Thank you all for uh, following me on YouTube. Um, keep giving me your comments. I love the comments. The feedback is probably the, you know, the real thing that sort of, you know, spurs me along to do a little bit more. So please do that. Please do more of that. Um, and just thank you for all being around. And I'm just so pleased that I've finally managed to get this, oh, this nemesis of a video done. And I can move on to the next thing. So um, I'm going to have a raise, raise a glass to that. And cheers all. Um, see you soon. And thanks for watching.